What's up guys? Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast. I'm going to start out today talking about some carbon steel, some pan prices, and some matfers. Hadn't talked about matfer in a while. Um, if you remember about a year or so ago, I put up a review of this Debouille Mineral B carbon steel crepe pan. And my wife has actually gotten into making crepes. She actually makes them a couple times a week, getting pretty good at that, believe it or not. The other day we were watching a Jacques Pepin video on YouTube about making crepes. And she noted that, hey, that pan he's using is a lot smaller than the one I'm using. And she mentioned that she might want a smaller crepe pan. Holy cow, my wife actually wants a pan. If you want a new frying pan, I am your guy. So I got online and poked around a little bit and ordered this guy. This one is a Matfer carbon steel crepe pan, a little bit smaller. And it just came in. We'll do a video on that at some point. But what I wanted to talk about is that Matfer pan prices seem to have moderated and become a little more reasonable. Now we've got hyperinflation, we had COVID, we had economic shutdowns, we had supply chain issues, people having trouble getting container ships in from Europe and getting products over to America. And prices had kind of gone absolutely crazy there for a while. Now normally there was always kind of an order to the carbon steel universe. You had mat for pans, a little bit more utilitarian, a little bit more geared towards back of the house food service industry, fantastic cooking performance, maybe a little homely when it came to looks, but those were always in that kind of $40, $50 price range. Then you kind of moved up to Debouillets. Mineral Bs were always kind of $60 or $70, a little bit fancier for people who have fancier home kitchens. Then around $100 and higher, you kind of had those Debouillet Mineral B Pros, and there was kind of an order and everything kind of made sense. When all those problems hit the supply chain, the Matfers kind of went crazy. And at one point, the 11 and 7 8 inch Matfer, we talk about that one quite a bit around here, one of the most popular ones. That thing was up around $110 or more. No, that is not a $110 pan. Fantastic cooking performance, not a $110 pan. Happy to say though that when I got online and was looking for this, this Matfer crepe pan, Prices have moderated that 11 and 7 8 inch mat for now down around $50, $53 with free shipping. That is a pretty darn good deal there. Really like that price on that pan. This crate pan, I haven't opened it up yet, but I paid around $23 for this thing with free shipping. Seems like a pretty darn good deal to me. But I'd like to give a shout out to Mapfer. Their pan prices have moderated and come back down and it's some pretty good deals out there on Mapfers at the moment. Never throw away the pumpkins. Now, why are we talking about pumpkins? It's Easter week around here. Uh, spring is on the way, flowers are blooming, grass is greening up. Easter is here, why talk about pumpkins? Well, last September, late September, early October, my wife bought some Halloween pumpkins. Decorated the front porch, a couple of them were carved, and Halloween came and went, and I went to throw away those pumpkins. And she said, no, do not throw out those pumpkins. I am going to roast those. We're going to cut them up. We're going to roast them. We're going to eat some roast pumpkin. Roast pumpkin. Okay, whatever. Thanksgiving came and went. The pumpkins are still on the front porch. I said, I'm going to throw those pumpkins out. She said, no, don't throw those pumpkins out. I'm going to cut them up. We're going to roast them. We're going to eat some roast pumpkin. So we started hanging Christmas lights pumpkins are still on the porch. I said, well, at least I'm going to take the things off the porch and stick them in the garage. Okay. Christmas came and went. New Year's came and went. President's Day came and went. Spring break came and went. And we're now up to Easter. I'm still stepping over these doggone pumpkins in the garage. And my wife says, no, don't throw them out. We're going to cut those pumpkins up. We're going to roast them and eat them. Now, I want to point out a couple of things here. One, the garage is not an adequate place for sanitary food storage. Got bug spray out there. I've got fertilizer, gas for the mower. Not a place I want my food stored. Second, nobody eats rose pumpkin. 
You go to the supermarket, there are potato chips, there are corn chips. There are no roast pumpkin chips. You cannot buy roast pumpkin at the supermarket. There is no restaurant chain that specializes in roast pumpkin. I can go get pizza, go get tacos. People like to eat those things. There is demand. People do not eat roast pumpkin. So you know what I did? Got Easter coming up. Easter Sunday's on the way. We're getting Easter baskets ready. I just took those pumpkins and threw them in the trash. No. No. I told my wife and she said, we threw away my roast pumpkins and we were going to roast those and cut them up and eat them. And it was as if Mother Teresa were holding a puppy and I just went up and slapped that dog. Oh gosh. So now I am the bad guy. The bad guy. And after all, it's Easter week. I think forgiveness should be on the agenda, right? Should be out of the doghouse. Now, if we get to the 4th of July and I chunk out her Christmas poinsettias, she's still trying to keep going. You guys may need to come look for my body. Okay, now we've got some viewer comments, questions, and feedback. In the last pancast, you might remember we unboxed that very expensive $300 DeMeyer stainless steel frying pan. Tony D wrote in and said, my wife still doesn't know what our DeMeyer pan set costs. <laughs> Key here, if you're ever gonna tell her, do it right after you throw away the pumpkins. It's never gonna get any worse. We unboxed a Kramer Damascus stainless steel prep knife and sliced a tomato in a video last week. Tektor Gorch wrote in and said, that is a horrible looking tomato. Indeed, that was a horrible looking tomato. That is a Utah wintertime supermarket tomato. As the weather warms up, going to get some plants going on the back deck. I expect tomato quality to improve around here significantly soon. JW writes in and says, hi, Uncle Scott. His question is, he likes uh, carbon steel. Why should I cook with a stainless steel pan when I have a carbon steel pan? Is one better than the other? The answer here is we often recommend a three pan strategy around here. A good cast iron pan, a good stainless steel pan, and a good carbon steel pan. And if you have all those, you can do quite a lot with them. The reason to have a stainless steel versus those other two is in stainless steel, you can use acidic ingredients. So you can reduce tomatoes, you can make tomato sauce, you can use red wine, you can use vinegar, lime juice, if you've got some fajita meat that's been marinating. You can do that in a stainless steel, can't really do that as well with the other pans. That's the reason to have a stainless steel as well. And also, if you remember, in the Stobe Oval Groton Pan review, we made some scallop potatoes using some Gruyere cheese. I remarked on how expensive Gruyere has become, $31 a pound at my local supermarket. James M. wrote in and said a great video. Thanks, James. And he says, the Costco's near him carry Gruyere. I went to my local Costco, uh, the one I go to normally, and they did not carry Gruyere. I was across town the other day, and then there's another Costco, a bigger one. I stopped in and checked, and indeed, that one did carry Gruyere, about $12 a pound for this stuff. I bought a couple of them. Haven't tried them yet, but if you're looking for discount cheese, Costco may or may not be the place to check. It's going to be hit or miss. And I note that somehow at this point in my life, I am looking for discount cheese. Oh, well, that wraps her up for this edition of Uncle Scott's Pancast. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.